seek his kingdom, run after him, because Jesus is the word and word is Jesus. The kingdom of God all belongs to Jesus. We can just seek Jesus. We can just seek him. Guess what? We can get to that place and reach the heavenly places. You know that scripture says God allow, allow heaven to be here on earth? When we seek Jesus in the kingdom of God, we can, we can pull up right there with our hands. Go up there and grab the very thing we need. So whatever you need, stop seeking everything else and seek the kingdom of God first. Because in the kingdom of God, there is fullness of joy. In the kingdom of God, there is the peace that you need. In the kingdom of God, there is a way that's going to be made for you. In the kingdom of God, there is provision, there is protection, there is everything that you need. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Kingdom Rock Network. My name is Shekana Elder, and we are back again with another lesson. As always, I am super excited about the Word of God that's going forth tonight. So go ahead and grab you a little snack, something to drink, and get comfortable. All right, let's go ahead and get right into it. Today's title is going to be Seek the Source. Seek the Source. In our lives, oftentimes we, we are told to Go, go, go after whatever you want. If you want it, go get it. Keep pushing, keep pressing. Go, go do it, go do it. If you want it, work until you get it. And we're, and we're told things like that in our lives. And yes, that's great. You're supposed to go towards it. However, however, many people are so focused on getting the thing or the stuff and they miss Jesus. So kind of, what do you mean? In our lives, what we do is we go after the job. I got to get a job. I need a promotion. We go after the money. I need more money. I need to pay my bills. I need this. I need this. I need this. We go after the cars, the houses, the keys, the approval letter, and the list goes on and on and on. My husband, my wife, I need a wife. I need a husband. I need a husband. I need a wife. And we're seeking these things, the things, the things, the stuff, the stuff, the stuff, the things, the stuff, and our focus is off of Jesus. We're looking at everything else and what we need and how we need a way to be made for us. And so... Us being the people that we are in this human body, letting our flesh override the spirit, we seek the stuff and we stop seeking Jesus. And the focus is solely on stuff. We stop seeking the source. Who is the source? The source is Jesus. So really briefly, let me just explain to you the definition of source. It's a place, person, or thing from which something comes or can be obtained. Let me say it one more time. The definition of source is a place, person, or thing from which something comes or can be obtained. Now, the word resource, it is a stock or supply of money, materials, items, things, the things that we need, those things, that stuff, and other assets, other needs that can be drawn by people, by a person, or an organization, watch this, in order to function effectively. So I want you to understand that sources are the main power, the main powerhouse. Yes, resources are wonderful. Resources are great. Yes, connects and all those things are wonderful. That they're really good. But all those resources, they come from a source. So my question for you tonight, what are you seeking? The resources, the things, the money, the house, the car, the man, the woman? Or are you seeking the source which can give you all that you need? Amen? So let's go ahead and get right into it. I want you to understand this, that resources must be refilled by a source. Let me say it one more time. Resources must be refilled by a source. Now, I want you to notice something here real quick with the word resource. In the word resource, there's a prefix. That prefix is re. The word re, it means to return back to the original. The word re, it means to return back to the original. So yes, we need those things. Yes, we need those resources. But what happens when we run out? Because resources require a refilling from the source. So when the, the things run out, when, when money is short, what, what do you do? When, when resources are gone, what do you do? What, what happens when, when I said when, when money goes short? What happens when you, you get laid off on the job? What happens when your car breaks down? Yes, that nice, fancy 2025 car. It's so nice and shiny. But what happens when the car breaks down and it's no longer in your possession? What happens when you lose that house? 
What happens when you lose your business? When business is going slow, the, the sales are going slow, and eventually that resource you were depending on, it shuts down. And, and now you don't have it flowing anymore. What happens when you lose those resources? What happens when the things, the stuff that we seek is taken away from us? Again, resources are not always reliable. Keep that in mind because they require a refilling from a source. Resources run out, but a source stands. Let me say it one more time. Resources, they run out, but a source, it stands. So some of you are probably asking, okay, Shekana, I, I hear what you're saying about resources and source. Source is main, I get it. Resources is just stuff. Okay, so where can I find this source that's reliable? Well, let me tell you about this source that I know that is reliable. That source is Jesus. Let's go ahead and take a look at Matthew 6, 31 through 34. And I'm going to read today from the New Living Translation. And it reads, So don't worry about these things, saying, What will I eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. Verse 34. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I love this scripture. Let's just break it down real briefly. Verse 31. It tells us don't worry about those things you need. It tells us clear as day. Sometimes we, we go about in our lives, again, as being the people that we are, the humans that we are in this flesh body. We go around about life trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to make this way over here? I see money is short, but I got bills coming up tomorrow, but I only have this much in my account. Trying to, you're, trying, you're trying to figure out a way, worrying about this, worrying about that. But I just love this right here. It's just clear as day. God is saying, don't worry. Now, this, this, this statement right here alone should be some encouragement to you. God says, don't worry. Don't, this is not me saying, this is Jesus, Jesus speaking. He says, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about it because I already know what you need. Jesus knows exactly what you need. For those that are watching Jesus, he knows exactly what you need. Amen. He knows exactly what you need. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 32, it tells us, it's telling us that those things that we seek, that stuff that we seek, those things controls, control the thoughts of unbelievers. Jesus, your heavenly father, he already knows all of your needs. I want to point out this word all. It doesn't say that he knows some of the things that you need, that he's going to make sure you're good on some ends or certain things, but he, he knows all of your needs. Everything that you need that you feel like no one else may understand, Jesus knows exactly what you need, my friend. He knows exactly all of your needs. Amen? Something to shout about. He knows exactly what I need. So I can't seek him because he already knows. Amen. Let's just go ahead and keep reading. Verse 33, it tells us. So basically, instead of seeking stuff, instead of seeking things, seek the kingdom of God. The New King James Version, it tells us, seek first the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to notice here, it says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. The other version, it says, seek first the kingdom of God. So a lot of times in our life, what we do is we allow Jesus to be our last option. You ever heard somebody say before something, something in this, in this nature? Well, we, when we did everything, um, we want to just call on Jesus. And, and we use Jesus as our final resolution when Jesus ought to be the first thing we do, the first person we run to, the first, the first thing we, we go after. But, we're, but again, us being people that we are in this, in this natural body, when we seek everything else, you, you finally get down in the hospital bed and now you want to call on Jesus. You did everything else. You did everything else. And your last result, your last resort is Jesus. But again, the scripture tells us in verse 30, 33, it says to seek the kingdom of God first. Somebody say first. First. Put him first. For those that are watching, I just want to encourage you today to get your priorities in order. Let me say it again. Get your priorities, my friend, my sister, my brother, my uncle, my niece, my cousin, whoever you are, get your priorities in order. If you're a believer of God, it tells us to seek his kingdom first, to seek his kingdom first. Let's stop making Jesus our last option. 
our, our final destination, when we get in that car and drive, the same way you don't know where you go when you put the GPS in there, make God your GPS. Amen? Put him in there before you get on the road so you know exactly where you're going. Because he will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you and show you the way. There's no point of you going ahead of him before he gets there. You know the scripture, it says he'll go ahead of you, make every crooked way straight. If we stop going ahead of Jesus and let him go ahead of us, guess what? All that stuff you can bypass, he's going to go ahead and clear it out for you. He said he will go ahead of you and make every crooked way straight. So stop seeking stuff. Stop seeking things. Stop seeking people. Stop seeking everything else and seek first the kingdom of God. So y'all are probably asking, Shekana, what is the kingdom of God? What does that mean? The kingdom of God is God reality, God initiative, God provision. My personal definition, this is Shekinah's definition of the kingdom of God. I see the kingdom of God as the key. And I want you to understand what a key is. There, be, there, there may be doors that are locked, but when I have a key, when, I, when you pull up at your house, and, you, and the door is locked, put that key in, guess what? It's going to open and get you access to what you need. You get access to the refrigerator. You get access to eat your snacks, to get your juice boxes. You get access to use the bathroom, get access to your air conditioning, access to your TV, access to everything in that house by having that one key. So but you understand the kingdom of God is just, for me, like a key. A key. And all the things I just named, that's, that's natural things. But the kingdom of God will give you not only access to those things that we talk about natural, but this is talking about something supernatural, something that's, that's supernatural. We're on a whole heavenly rim now. If we could just take time and devote time and diligently seek Jesus, seek his kingdom, run after him, because Jesus is the word and word is Jesus. The kingdom of God it all belongs to Jesus. If we could just seek Jesus, if we could just seek him, guess what? We can get to that place and reach the heavenly places. You know that scripture says God allow, allow heaven to be here on earth? When we seek Jesus in the kingdom of God, we can, we can pull up right there with our hands. Go up there and grab the very thing we need. So whatever you need, stop seeking everything else and seek the kingdom of God first. Because in the kingdom of God, there is fullness of joy. In the kingdom of God, there is the peace that you need. In the kingdom of God, there is a way that's going to be made for you. In the kingdom of God, there is provision. There is protection. There is everything that you need. Again, don't let Jesus be your last result. Seek him first. Somebody say, I got to seek him first. I got to seek him first. Let's be a little country. I got to. I got to seek him first. I got to seek him first. Amen. Seek him first. Thank you, Jesus. And if we keep on reading, it tells us, and all these things will be added unto you. But before we get there, let's just go back a little bit. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. And then it says, live righteously. Let's just hang out right here for a little bit. It says, live righteously. When you're living in something, it's a lifestyle. When you're living something, it's no longer you acting on a Sunday morning, getting your praise on, or on Wednesday, getting your worship, but it's a lifestyle. It's who you are outside of the church house. It's who you are when you're at work. It's who you are in the stores. It's who you are in the gyms. It's who you are around your friends. It's who you are. It's a lifestyle. It tells us to live righteously. Now understand here, this is, a two, this is a two thing. It says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This version says to live righteously. So you can't just pick one, not the other. A lot of us like to read the word of God and pick and choose, but we can't do that. The word of God is whole. The word of God is truth. We don't go and take out what we want to use. We use the whole thing, quote the whole thing, and act on the whole entire word. Amen? So as we seek the kingdom of God, it also says live righteously. Live righteously. Live righteously. Thank you, Jesus. They just got me excited for a second. Because there's a lot of people, we, we can do the whole church look and, you know, we can do all that stuff and look all suited and smell all good with the makeup and the, and the hair fluffed out on Sundays and Wednesdays. But the scripture is trying to tell us you got to make it a lifestyle, baby. My sister, my brother, my friend, you got to make it a lifestyle. Live righteously. I, I remember hearing a pastor, I believe his name is Pastor Stroud. He has made this, this statement before in one of his previous messages. And he said that sometimes what we do is, what people do is they, they get in trouble because people, they, 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 excuse me, what they do is they, they live in sin and they visit God. They live in sin and they just visit God. So, so let me ask you a question. If, if I'm living in, in sin and I only visit God, do you think that 
all these things will be easily accessible to me? Do, do, you, do you think that? It's, it's like someone saying that um, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the gym and I, I want to lose all this weight. I, I, I want a six pack. I want big muscles. I, I want to be slim thick. I want to look real good, but I'm only going to go to the gym maybe twice a week out of seven days. And then I'm going to make sure I eat every junk food. I want to eat every cake that I want, drink every milkshake that I want, drink all the sodas that I want and just do whatever I want to do and forget about the healthy part. But I want to get slim. I want to look good. Does that make any kind of sense to anyone? Just like that in that aspect, I want you to understand, we cannot just visit God. You know what? You can do what you want to do. But if you want to seek the kingdom of God and reach all of the things that he has for you, you must, according to the word of God, you must live righteously. Living lifestyle. Not acting because you're in front of church people, but allowed to be a lifestyle. Somebody say it's got to be a lifestyle. It's got to be a lifestyle. Thank you, Jesus. I had to just take a moment there and just revert back because that's just what the Holy Spirit wants to get out. So we're going to have to let him lead and guide and let him get it out. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and keep reading. So all in all with this scripture, I want you to understand something that God tells us here. It says to seek his kingdom and live righteously. And then let's go on, go on to read. And it says, and he will give you everything you need. Let me read again. And he will give you everything that you need. I want you to understand something here in this, in the scripture. It says he will give you everything you need. It doesn't say that you'll have to work, work, work hard, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. And, he'll, and then you have, to, you have to get it from him. He, he's going to give it to you. I want you to understand someone that, 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 that comes in and they give you a gift that they, they give it to you. I'm giving you this house. I'm I'm giving you this car. I, I, I'm giving you the keys. I'm, I'm giving you whatever you need. I'm giving you the promotion. When someone gives you something, there's no, no, no hustle and gristle and fight and, and all that stuff going on. He's going to give it to you. And when you think about this scripture, if I'm doing what is holy, if you're doing what is holy, if we're, if we're seeking Jesus and seeking his kingdom and we're living a righteous life, it makes sense for our heavenly father, Jesus, to give those things to us. And it doesn't just say he'll give us some things. It says he'll give us all that we need. So for those that are watching today, I want to just let you know that if you continuously seek the kingdom of God and live a righteous life, just, just know that Jesus, he's going to give you what you need. The man that you need, the woman that you need, the husband that you need, the wife that you need, the spouse that you need, the healing that you need, the breakthrough that you need, the promotion that you need, the increase that you need. Whatever you need, I want you to understand something, my friend. If you just seek his kingdom, live a righteous life, he will give it to you. He will give it to you. He will give it to you. Let that sink in. He's going to give you all that you need. Thank you, Jesus. And let's just go ahead and read this last part and then we'll move on. Verse 34, it says, so don't worry. There, there he says it again. Don't worry. Don't worry, my friend, about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Troubles, excuse me, today's trouble is enough for today. So I want those that are listening today, I want you to understand that the word of God is telling us, do not worry. Do not worry. Somebody say it with me. Do not worry. One more time. Do not worry. If you are a believer and you are a follower of Christ, I want to encourage you to stop worrying. Stop trying to figure out how things are going to happen, how a way is going to be made, how the stuff is going to come, how the things are going to come, and trust Jesus wholeheartedly. And we're talking about seeking the source. What is the source? Who is the source? What's a reliable source? That reliable source is Jesus, and I can tell you exactly why, because his word says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I want you to understand that you can depend on things and people all day long, but sometimes people, they do change. People, they do change. One day she's in a good mood. The next day she's a little cranky. By the end of the day, she's happy again. You know what I'm saying? People, they change. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. And what he says, it will come to pass. We can depend on him because we've seen him do it before in lives of people around us and the word of God. And I want to encourage you today that if God did it for them, he will do it for you. So let's seek Jesus. Let's seek 
Jesus. And, I, and I'm reminded now, thank you, Holy Spirit, of the scripture that tells us to, to those that diligently seek Jesus. Who is Jesus the source, seeking the source. Those who diligently seek Jesus. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to reward you. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So again, let's understand that we have to seek the source, which is Jesus, a reliable source, not a resource that has to be refilled by a source, but he's a reliable source, the actual thing, the whole package. He is a source that we can depend on. And that scripture says those that diligently seek him. What does the word diligent mean? Like we just said, diligently making it a lifestyle, not just visiting God on Sundays and Wednesdays, not just visiting him when times are hard, not just visiting him when all hell has broke loose in your house, not just visiting him in those times, but visiting him at all times. Amen. And I want you to understand something. This is just a natural example I want to just give you. I want you to imagine someone, and I know everyone has this person in their life, maybe one or two or three people in your life where they only call you when they want something. I got a few of them in my life, and I already know when I see that caller ID says that name, I just go ahead and ignore that phone call because I know either she wants some information, she wants to know what happened, or she wants me to do something for her. They only call it when they want something. So then we have that kind of relationship where, okay, when she calls me, when he calls me, I know they want something. And so this time, I think I'm going to decline the call. Imagine if Jesus was like that. Imagine if Jesus was like that. Were those that only visit him in the times of troubles, that those that only seek him when they need to seek him because they need a blessing from him? Imagine how it makes God feel. But guess what? God is not like us men. He's not like me. He's not like you. He is so merciful. And he's full of so much grace because he will still pick up the phone each and every time. But again, the scripture does not lie. It does not return void. The scripture is truth. He said that he's a rewarder. You know what it means to, to reward? He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So my friend, my brother, my sister, I just want to encourage you to seek the source. Seek the Jesus. Seek him diligently. Seek him when times are good. Seek him when times are bad. Seek him when the sun is shining. Seek him when the storm has come. Seek him when you're going through the divorce. Seek him when you are in a happy marriage. Seek him when your kids are acting crazy. Seek him when your kids are acting good. Seek him when money is short. Seek him at all times. At all times. Diligently seek him. I just want to highlight here just real quick the word seek. The word seek it simply means to pursue. The word seek, it simply means to pursue. If you have a dream, if you have an ambition, if, we, if, you, if you have a goal and you really want to reach that goal, you really want to lose that weight, you really want to, to do whatever you got to do, open that business and do whatever you want to do. If you really want to do it, you're going to pursue until you reach it. You're going to push until you reach it. You're going to press until you get to the finish line. In the same aspect as we do that with things, with our life, we must make it a priority again. We must make it a priority to seek Jesus diligently. Pursue Jesus diligently. And his word says that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So my friend, I just want to encourage you yet again, seek the source. Stop seeking the resources because, again, resources that require a refilling from a source. But Jesus, <laughs> his will, it never runs dry. His will, it never runs dry. You run to him. You can drink from him. You can eat from him. And I promise you, my friend, you will never come up short dealing with Jesus. Let me say it again. You'll never come up short when you deal with Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, again, all in all, seek the source. And who is the source? That's Jesus, a reliable source. All right, well, that's all that I have for you tonight. Let's just go ahead and go into a word of prayer, shall we? Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for the word that came forth today. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that came and just visited us, Lord God. And God, right now in this moment, God, I pray, Lord God, that those that are watching under the sound of my voice, they'll begin, Lord God, to seek you, Lord God. God, create a hunger and a thirst inside of us for more of you. Allow us to long and thirst and hunger for more of you, Lord God. Just as the deer, it pants for the water. Just as the deer, it, it longs for that water, Lord God. God, allow us to be just like that. 
Allow us to long for you. A long for your presence, God. Allow us to thirst for you and thirst for your presence, God. So those that are watching right now, God, create a hunger and a thirst in them for more of you, for more of you. And God, even so, allow us to decrease as you increase in us. Allow this fleshly man, this fleshly desires, the things that we want to do, allow us, oh God, to step back and God, follow you and be led by you and you alone. God, we seek you. And right now, God, we even ask for forgiveness. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive those that are watching, Lord God, for seeking everything else but you when we ought to put you first as your word says to seek the kingdom of God first. So God, right now we ask and we repent that you forgive us for seeking everything else except for you. So God, as your word says that you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, I thank you that you have forgiven us, that we are forgiven. So God, right now we walk in liberation. We walk in freedom. We walk with every scale off our eyes so we can see very clear. We walk with the chains and the shackles broken off our lives, and we walk and we win. And God, I just thank you for your word. Allow us to continue to seek you and seek you alone. For your word says if we seek you, Lord God, and live a righteous life, all that we need will be added to our lives. So God, allow us to seek you and to trust that you're going to make a way. Trust that you're going to open the door. Trust that you're going to do what you say that you're going to do. For you're a man that cannot lie, and what you say, it must come to pass. And your promises are yes and amen. So God, again, allow us to seek you forevermore at all times, in the good and in the bad. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my friend, that's all that I have for you. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the Kingdom Rock Network.